In the last episode of Infobox, we look at the origin and design process of the ARMS Microns, little model kit weapon boys. We also checked out the half of the Minicons, from the basic pure energon to the demonic hellbats with power of space. If you didn't watch it, go back to the first episode. But if you're up to date, welcome in the second episode of Forgotten Transforms Prime Minicons. After that we have the yellow-orange Electro Energon. I think a name like this explains itself. It's an energon that gives powers of electromancy. This type of energy fuels Baru the falcon, Gabu the horseshoe crab and Dai the crocodile. Individually, Baru turns into a giant cleaver, I think it's the only Transformers accessory that's that, and Gabu turns into a double blade. I have no idea what it is, but, but that's the official term used by Takara. And Dai is a miniature rocket launcher, but that's not the end. With the powers combined, they form the massive broadsword, the Dark Matter Caliber. Next is the Aquamarine Synthetic Energon, another type of energon we see in the show. Synthetic Energon, or Synthet in short, was developed by Ratchet in episode 22, Forbidden Transformation. Ratchet's strongest legend? He tried to reverse engineer our endless swords of power, but sadly, usage of an incomplete formula made him go berserk. All Minicons that are on Sinten are Hellflame Redecos of past Minicons. They were translucent red Redecos given away as promotions. Since they are all Crystallic and Decepticons, maybe the idea behind them is that they are Decepticon-made clones with Sinten related experiments. Together they combine to a giant grapple claw named after the plasma explosions of Sun, the prominent killer. After that we have the green ion energon. Uh, maybe this energon gives some ability to control the chemical build of materials by adding and removing the charges. It's supposed to sound like ion the store those minicons were exclusive to. This energon keeps the theme of synthetic energon and it powers promotional redecos of the past minicons. You have Hellflame Guru, kinda sad hazen with his buddies, Shining Blue Gura, and a translucent purple terror con Zori which was added to a uh, what if Bumblebee, showing what if he became a Terracon. The Minicons combine into the Solar Ion Arrow, a giant double-barreled bow. Next up we have Black Energon, it's called the Magne Energon. Magne is probably the Japanese term for Magnesium, at least that's what Wikipedia gave me, so it would make sense this Energon gives the user powers of magnetism. Magne Energon fuels RP, partner of Dimension Traveling Leo Prime, his forged out of shards of Unicron. RP turns to an ancient sword, whose power comes straight from Leo Prime's Energon Matrix. As you can see, RP is stylized after Moon, the little rabbit bot from Beast Wars II. We have So. So is a partner of Swerve. Swerve is a great geologist who sadly gets lost easily, since he gets lost in his own thoughts. We never see him on screen, since he is always busy traveling the world, scouting for Energon deposits. He doesn't mind working alone, he likes traveling and just sending back reports. Well, he doesn't actually work alone alone, he works with his earlier mentioned teammate, So, who turns into a bus So. Due to how much time they spend alone, Swerve quickly finds out about the little bot's secret, but he promises not to tell the other bots that their weapons are sentient. BONUS TRIVIA! Did you know? There were plans to retool Prime Ratchet into a Prime version of Gears. You can see the unused head in Ratchet's instruction. We also have Estu, which is the partner of Smokestream. He is a really cheerful and optimistic, and he turns into a crossbow for Smokestream. Yeah, you may notice it, but his whole joke is that he's a copycat of B2, just like Smokescreen's joke was that he was a copy of Bumblebee. But he does have a unique trivia about him. His world mode design is based on Deathcon, who was friends with Smokescreen in the G1 episode The Gambler. Together, these minicons combined the Leonic Tonfa. It may not look like a real-life tonfa, but it does look like a tonfa sword from the Japanese pop culture. After that we have the blue Positro Energon. <sighs> okay kids, time for a physics lesson. Positronium is a system consisting of an electron and its antiparticle, a positron. Unlike hydrogen, this system doesn't have any protons, making it unstable, which causes it to emit gamma rays, in simplified terms. So yeah, this type of energon seems to be pretty strong. It fuels. Jeizu, Saisu, and Praru. Jeizu is a lance, Saisu is a double-bladed axe, and Praru is a spear. They're all friends of Optimus Prime, and if you close, they're all reference to Carbots. Jeizu is Jazz, Praru is Prowl, and Saisu is Baver's movie Sideswipe for some reason. Together they form the Cosmotector, a powerful shield that can absorb any attack. After that we have the Burgundy Cure Energon. 
I think the name is really self-explanatory, it probably helps with the function of self-repair systems. This energon type fuels the next Gashapon minicons. Ratchet Spanner, Wiljak's Kunai and RC Blade. Together they combine to a supernova lens? Okay, I get a spanner, that's a type of a wrench, but how do you heal people with a kunai and a short sword and a lance named after an explosion of a star? Eh, <sighs> maybe there aren't weapons, just really weird reshaped medical equipment. After that we have the dark green energon, it's the poison energon, or as most of the western fandom will know it, toxin. A toxic variant of energon that served the Septicons as a bioweapon, debuted in the episode 41. Toxic Flame Transformation, Hardshell, King of the Insects. And the toxic attributes of the energon match the minicons that run on it Starscream Boomerang, Megatron Cannon, and Dobo, a dragonfly minicon that turns into a minigun. Together they combined the Action Buster. After that we have the clear with blue sheen called Ice Energon. I think the name is also rather self-explanatory. Bido is a beetle that turns to the slingshot weapon for Shockwave. Yes, full of Cybertron Shockwave was released in Japan in the Prime Toy Line, it's a long story. You may actually know Giza, since they managed to break out to different Transformers continuities, but the one thing that always stays the same is that he's the sword partner of Nemesis Prime. The only difference is that Prime Giza is a saw to shark and not an eagle. After that we have Bogu, this little mole that turns to one of Unicron's tentacles. Together they combine the Shooting Star Scissors. Next up we have the Pink Shield Energon. Why? Did someone mix stuff up at Takara? Why is the shield team the one filmed after radiation, while these guys have a shield power? Either way, we return to the smaller partners of bigger guys. We have Yuji, a little inventor who has a weakness for bad jokes, he turns into one of Wiljack's katanas, Ulma, Ultra Magnus's hammer, and Iro, who is Ironhide's cannon. Together they combine to Corona Glaive, not to be confused with the weapon of Fall of Cybertron Magnus. Since it's a melee weapon, maybe it gives its user a passive shield to protect himself during combat. Next up we have the Aqua Blue Mystic Energon. With a name like this I would expect some weird magical processor of matter stuff, you know from animated. Incons that use it are Magi, a super fast mantis blade used by Silas after he takes over Breakdown's body. One of the Dagos. Dago is a single minicon that shares a pair of bodies between Rumble and Frenzy. It can also transform into a pile driver or a cannon. And last we have Jigu, who is Dreadwing's shark assault rifle. I'm gonna lie, I really like this design. Together they combined the Astro Blaster, completing the trio of Japanese named relics from Armada. After that we have the purple Energon with metallic flakes. It's called the Death Dark Energon, powered up version of normal Dark Energon. It fuels the powered up version of the Dark Caliber team, taking them into the Dark Energon Saber. We also have the Ice Blue Energon. Sadly it doesn't have a name, but it's associated with the sword bots from Transformers Go. If I were to guess, maybe it would be called like Honor, Blade, Spirit, you know, something related to those terms from like samurai and ninja movies. We have Zan, Jin, Gan, Geki, Sho, Sen, X and Go. Takara only revealed to us the combo weapon of Gan, Jin and Zan, and together they form the Sanjo Hawken, which translates to the Triple Warlord Sword. And for the end, you remember how I mentioned Dark Energon itself, powered up Megatron and his minicons. But it's not over, since Unicron himself is powered by an even more potent version of it, the Dark Purple. Super Dark Energon. This angel of death was created from the countless mills of Earth, conjoined by the powers of his blood. And that is not the end, since if needed, he can fuse his essence with Megatron in the shape of the Gaia armor. As we see later, Leo Prime used all of his remains from the destroyed Unicrons to carve an armor that he gifted to Optimus, with hope it will help him fight with Megatron. But the chance of Unicron's power returning and corrupting Optimus is never zero. Holy hell, this was probably a really long video. I hope you watch it all, and I'm really happy I could tell you the story, lore and some wacky headcanons about my favorite part of Transformers Prime. But this is still not the end, there is still a bunch of weapon combos I could show you, there are still all the weaponized modes, possible customs, and I think people had a reason to clown on EVO Fusion, cause unlimited potential is here. So thank you for watching, let like, subscribe, check out my other videos, and tell me, which minicon is your favorite? If you could have one minicon, what would it transform into? Would it be humanoid or animal-like? Please comment below, bye!